Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Pathfinder. This is round one of The Godless Ones. Now, you might notice that the decks aren't formed. What's going on here, you might say? Well, a couple of things. One, I found a shockingly bad bug in the die roller, which made it impossible to actually play a proper game. So I had to fix that, and it took forever. And then while I was doing it, I changed some codes so the uh, cards discard in the correct order and recharge in the correct order. Plus, I put these little colored markers on the board so you can easier tell which colored token you are. And another of other little things. So basically, the mod's quite different, so I just thought I'd restart with the new mod. Well, I had to because of the, the die. In addition... Uh, you might notice that I'm no longer using Hask. I really like Hask, but uh, a mate of mine on the on the comments commented that we have a very low arcane skill set with all the heroes that we chose. So I've swapped out Hask for Anora, who is a uh, a magic user. She's got. Uh, lots of intelligence she's got craft knowledge and arcane or d12 plus or more so that kind of replaces uh, hask who had the uh, the craft skill plus she also has the arcane skill so we've just swapped him out and because we're no longer using hask i've actually moved kyra to the last position uh for healing so apart from that, everything is the same. Now, the reason I had to redo all the decks up the top is because I'm using default decks. And because I'm using six people, uh, we're using a lot of the base set cards, which means that uh, I couldn't build her deck because a lot of her cards are actually in the locations already. And I didn't want to invent my own deck for her because I couldn't be bothered. So I just restarted the game. I'm also using her uh, iconic hero cloak, which is an item. And we're going to use that to get rid of one of her books. Yeah, we're going to get rid of Book of the Lawmaster. Boom. And put that in there. So that's her, her setup. So basically, uh, she's pretty low, sixes and fours. But she's got a very high intelligence set and decent charisma. So she's a pretty hard one to use. Her skills are kind of cool though. When you attempt a check to acquire a spell, you may use your knowledge skill in place of any skill listed. So she can acquire lots of spells. And after you play a spell, you may recharge a random spell from your discard pile. Now that is actually a pretty awesome ability. It just means that uh, I can constantly recycle spells. So even though she's got a six hand size, She's actually not quite as uh, easy to kill, especially once you start collecting spells. Plus, she can create uh, magic shields. She can shield herself from cold or fire. Later on, she can actually uh, you know, shield herself from everything. So you discard a, a spell and you can resist cold fire and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. Like many halflings, Anora is driven by a combination of curiosity and luck. Her work on artifact analysis at the Ocularium has led her to the worship of Naeth, god of magic, whose worship is forbidden in her homeland. Fortunately, her love of adventurer has lessened the strain of her wayfaring lifestyle. Armed with her magical training and a few good books, Anora is always on the lookout for a few nuggets of esoteric lore. Mwah! Okay, so that's the new setup. And uh, let's build the scenarios. And we can just get straight into this. Yeah, block. Okay, sweet. Now that that's all set up, we'll just have a quick look at the way I play six-player games. Let's uh, get rid of this chat window. Nothing errored. Okay. So basically, there's a few things to take note. That's There's a lot to remember in this game. There's a lot of checks, okay? So for the first one is that the actual scenarios themselves have a power. So in the godless ones, whenever you require an ally, you may succeed at an intelligence or knowledge check to examine the top card of any location. So every time we get an ally, we can examine a location. 
the only thing for the world wound is that there's a demon-link henchman. There's no special powers for the actual adventure itself. And then every one of these like locations have an ability as well. So this one has, when you move or are moved here, bury a card. Any, any character at another location may discard a card to evade an encounter and move here. So there's this, right? And then when closing, that is how you close the effect. So you need to... If you don't satisfy the when closing ability, you then need to completely deplete the deck. So it's really important to hit those closing abilities or have the ability to close them. And finally, a lot of them have, when they're completely closed, some of them have effects as well. For example, let's have a look at this one. You summon a monster instead of the normal check to acquire a boon. So if you draw a boon, you actually have to fight a monster instead, okay? And to close this, you have to banish a weapon completely. That means send it to the box. You can't get it back again. And when it's permanently clo closed, you may draw weapons, you know, just randomly draw a weapon from the box. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you got to keep your head on. Now, the way this game works is that if we look up here, we've got the Blackfriar Adept, the Cascodian Demon, and the Cultus of Bathomet. These are the bad guys, the henchmen. And there is also Saloni, the demonologist that we talked about in the law video. We have to, she's the villain, okay? So if we come over here, basically villain cards and henchmen cards are a special kind of card. Uh, the villain is the purpose of the scenario is to kill the villain, right? And every single location either has a villain or a henchman and henchmen can actually also even be traps as well. You can find one. There are trick carnivorous traps. It's in there somewhere. Whatever. The point is, there is a lot. Each one of these things has a henchman or a villain. So every time you beat the henchman, you're capable of attempting the closing ability. So this one just says, summon and acquire a random ally. That's all you have to do. So we want to, you know, make sure we can beat the closing effect if we have a hero here now when you catch a villain it's a little bit different so if you if you fight and beat the villain he kind of runs away to any open locations so the goal of the game is to close as many of these locations as possible when you summon the villain you have the ability to uh, temporarily close the location which means that you can corner him but the best way to do it is to actually permanently close these locations when you can. So if I draw the Saloni here and beat her, basically she can be shuffled into any one of these decks, you know, including the deck she just came from, instead of the game ending. So that's basically the way it works. We have to go to these places, we have to close them, and we have to corner the villain. Now, like I said, it's the when cloning effect, when closing effect, is pretty important so what i like to do is i like to make sure that any hero i send anywhere has the best chance of closing those locations if they randomly need to so for example our best charisma this is a d10 plus two we've got a d8 d6 d10 plus one okay so our best charisma is balazar right so Balazar should go to the marketplace because to close, oh wait, no, to the, where was that? The manor house. Because to close the manor house, you have to summon and acquire a random ally. So say we're trying to close the manor house, you go boom, bla bing, bam, charisma check. Charisma is the most common way to get, uh, you know, to get allies. So we definitely want to do that. And that's basically the way I set it up. For example, this one here, to close this one, you have to banish a weapon. Saloni here has five weapons. So, you know, we're gonna send her here. She's also uh, a good combat person. I wonder if she's got the person of striding. Yes, she does. Excellent. So, uh, Potion of Striding allows you to move 
which means that you could banish the weapon to close it, then next turn you could take a weapon to replace it and then use Potion of Striding to move. Anyway, so she's very cool. So this one here, we have to just com complete a difficulty nine combat, okay? Now it says plus twice the scenario's adventure deck number, but we are actually playing scenario B, which means the scenario number is zero. So it's actually just a nine combat check, which is really easy. So pretty much anyone can beat the Citadel. We don't have to worry too much about that. This is summon a type of boon. We can choose boon. Summon and defeat the Servitor Demon. So this is to kill the demon. And I think it might be a good idea to send a land there. Uh, where was that one? There it is, a Forsaken Cloister. Now this is the annoying one to go to because uh, when you move or are moved here, bury a card. Any character at a location may discard a card to evade an encounter, then move here. Now, I'm not quite sure. I've always played that the first time, the first time that you play, you don't act to, actually, the first round, you don't trigger move abilities. Like, you just sort of start there. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, suppose just to be safe, I could... Uh, this barrier card right now. What do you, what does he have? Four. One, two, three, four. Let's just bury the Caltrops. Uh, okay, now she's also a pretty good charisma. Okay, summon and acquire a random weapon. So I think we're going to send her to the armory because that'll be probably a strength test or a melee test, and she's got a pretty decent strength at melee. That leaves these girls down here. We have Nora. Now she's got the charisma check, right? So I'm going to put her... Now she's got the arcane check, right? So I'm going to put her... Craft, that craft check. Yeah, right. So she's got the craft check, which is 12-3. So she's definitely going to win this. She has to roll a 2 <laughs> to to beat this so she's going to the laboratory and that leaves good old Kyra going to the marketplace right and that is our setup we are ready to actually play the game <laughs> okay let's do this so milliseconds for you a couple of days for me i'm back let's do this uh, i had to there was a, some more bugs i had to fix and uh, it should be ready to play now i, I did some tests playing a, a different game so it should be ready to go now a couple of things to note for starters this card here has this ability that says where is it this one oh, this one that says so this card has this ability that says when you move or are moved here, bury a card, okay? But the thing is, I've buried a card, but this very first placement of your characters, this very, very first placement of your characters, does not count as a movement. So that doesn't actually trigger. So you really should send someone here always first turn so you can get there without having to bury anything. So that means that this can go back in our hand. Also, once the, the the way the cohorts work is that you draw your hand and then you place it in your hand like that. So we start with one over our limit, which means unless we get, you know, three or less cards in our hand at the end of the turn, including the horse, we actually won't draw anything because he has four, a hand size of four. So I'll just draw the rest of the hands now. Uh, what have we got here? Four. Okay. So we're now ready to rumble. Right, so let's get started. Uh, let's advance the Blessing deck. And remember, we have, if we get an ally, we can do a roll to peak at a location. And you've just got to always try to remember the Atlas location ability as well. It's very easy to forget them. So let's get started. Let's just position the camera so I can grab the cards. Your memo. Start with a sacred weapon. It's a divine six. We have wisdom six, so we're not going to be very good at grabbing spells. Unless we luck out with a nice six. Yo, so close and yet so far. Okay, let's discard this athlete. 
and grab another card. Yoink! Retainer. That's a charisma four. That should be definitely got. We have a charisma of eight plus three. So we need a one to win. Now, basically with allies, most allies at the bottom have discard this card to explore your location. Okay, we rolled a 14, so we definitely got that. Now, what that means is we have like 80 cards to get through if we have to get every single card. And we've only got, what, 30 turns, and we have six characters. So a single round is six turns, right? So we only have 30 in here, which means it's not very long. <coughs> Be pun. Because we only have 30 turns, you know, it's not many rounds until it's game over. So we have to burn through these decks as quickly as possible, which means I almost never use allies for anything except their discard to explore ability. It's almost like that's the only thing I use them for. So, but we did actually gain an ally, which means that this triggers, which says we do an intelligence or a knowledge check. Now, our intelligence is a D6, which isn't very good. And what do we need to get? We need to get a six. So unless we roll a six here. Oh, wait, I rolled a two dice. What was it? D8, one, two, three. We'll still win because you only need a one, right? <laughs> but I better roll it correctly. Okay, so I've got a six. We only need four. And now roll a D6 because we need to test intelligence or knowledge. So our intelligence is a D6. So hopefully we'll get a six. Come on, six. Nope. Okay. All right, let's discard the retainer. Get another card. Yoink. Good Omen, that's another six. Basically, Intelligent, Arcane, Wisdom, Divine. We've already rolled for a spell and failed. Another fail. God. Let's do a Recruit. Yoink. Oh, we should be able to get this one. Magic Scale Mail. That is a Constitution check, which is eight for us. Okay, sweet. Yoink, into the hand. Now, we do have a blessing. Blessings can be discarded to explore and do a bunch of stuff. They're very versatile cards. Also, what's cool about blessing is that you can add die to checks from other players. The thing is, I'm a little worried because we don't really have any weapons. I mean, we've got a Caltrop bead. It adds a 1d4, which is basically nothing. I just... We just, uh, there's supposed to be one monster and one barrier in here. We're already at card six and we haven't got either. So basically we're pretty guaranteed to get a monster or a barrier very soon. You know, it's a, you know, a one third chance to draw a monster or a barrier. And we have no weapons in our hand. We actually have four weapons in our deck. So what I think I might do is actually end my turn here and try and get a weapon before I get any deeper into that really deep deck there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to discard the Caltrop beads and I'm going to activate this ability, which says you, when resetting your hand, you may shuffle this card into your deck. So I'm going to shuffle it in my deck and then I'm going to draw another two cards. Yes, and we get a weapon. Perfect. And we also get a helm. So we're nice and protected. Sweet. Okay, what you got for us, pinky boy? Demon Hunter. Okay, so his melee is d12 plus 1. And it is a melee range, uh, a melee or a range, so we need a 7, basically. We get an 11, so we pick him up. And now, of course, we can do the intelligence or the knowledge check. But unfortunately, he's pretty dumb. <laughs> he's got an intelligence of four, so he cannot, he's impossible for him to win. So that's basically that. Okay, let's do a Demon Hunter. Yoink. Ooh, 
Uh, what's the ability of this location? I forgot to look. You may summon and defeat a random monster instead of the normal check to acquire a boon. I should have sent Balazar there. Whatever. Okay, so draw three items from the box. If the scenario's invention deck number is three or higher, draw three non-basics. You may choose one and add it to your hand. Banish any not chosen. If you added one to your hand, the barrier is undefeated. Each character starts a card from her deck. Otherwise, the barrier is defeated. After you act, banish this barrier. Okay, so that's a typical Pathfinder horribly word. Is it items? I think it's items. Items, yeah. Horribly worded. So what this is saying is, is draw three cards. Yoink. Have a look at them. Oh, Goblin Skull. Nice. Banish this card to add 1d20 to your combat check. You may additionally expend any number of mythic charges. For each charge expended, add 1d20. If you defeat a bane by at least 5, each character at your location is dealt 1.6 damage. If you have the Goblin trait, bury this card instead of banishing it. So basically, this is like a really powerful d20 explosion. What else have we got? Holy Philacrity. Ah, ignore the corruption trait. I'm not quite sure how good that's going to be. I'm not quite sure how the corruption cards put work exactly. Uh, I have to keep an eye on that. Monkey Paw. You may use any skill in your deck to acquire this item. Roll 1d20 to determine the difficulty of the check. If you fail to acquire this card, it has the corrupted trait. Bury it. Shuffle this card. Okay, here's the actual ability. This is a gambling object, and it makes sense because basically you shuffle it into your deck and you get a 1d20 to add it to the check, which is pretty strong. But also, you have to roll a d20 and you increase the difficulty of the check by d20. So that could be really, really bad. I mean, it could be increased by 1. You could increase it by 20. Oh, dear. I do like the Goblin Skull. There is a something around... One of these things here we are we're at the laboratory when you would banish an item for its power bury it instead so that's actually pretty cool so this says banish so what i'm gonna i'm actually gonna take this and put in my hand and then I have to discard the top card of my... Oh, that's a blessing. That's really bad. Okay, whatever. Let's do a blessing and we'll draw the next card. Yoink! So I took this in my hand, which means that this thing triggered. So we have to discard a card. And then we... Uh, and then the, ba the, ba the barrier disappears. So this is a dexterity ranged. Our dexterity is a d6. This is a 7 to acquire, so we can't actually do it. And that's that. And we have a hand side of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to get rid of the spear. Uh, you know, I'm not actually... 1, 2... I think I'm just going to leave the hand as is. Boom. Okay. Sheila, she's the orange. Yoink. Now, what's her ability again? When you acquire a weapon, you may draw a card. Okay, so hide armor is craft three. We definitely should be able to get that. Uh, constitution is fortitude is fortitude. Yep. So it's an eight one. Oh, beautiful. Ooh. Oh, can't believe we failed. That is horrendous. Doesn't matter. It's a shitty piece of armor anyway. Let's put out the horse. Yoink. This is a much better one. This is also the same roll. Another one. That's unbelievable. Okay. Let's... Uh, Put out this one. Yoink. The Bolas. So Arrange dexterity. Our dexterity is four. We need five, so we can't do it. Yeah, so that's uh, we can't actually do this because it's a dexterity ranged. Okay, so that was a pretty horrendous turn. 
and draw two. Boom, boom. Okay, so now it is Balasar. Let's do him. Yoink. Advanced Blessing Deck. So what's the ability at his locations? When you encounter a boon of a type other than loot, draw a random boon of that type from the box, encounter one and banish the other. Okay, sweet. So, what is that, an item? Yep. So, did I shuffle that? Yep, boom. Night vision. Ooh, uh, and then shuffle it. Oh, I don't know about that. What's this one? To defeat a henchman of villain. I think I prefer that. Knowledge eight. We actually have knowledge, so let's do that one. So that's a D8 plus two. Yeah, ooh, seven, nice. That's a win. Okay, let's uh, do a blessing. Survival seven. We, uh, or Wisdom. Our uh, Wisdom is a D6. It requires seven, so we can't actually do this. Next. Constitution Fortitude. Uh, Constitution is a D6. Oh wait, before we do that, we can actually draw another armor. Recharge the combat bad damage by two. If this card has the corrupted trait, it does. Well, we'd get the one without the corrupted trait, right? So that's a four. We rolled a five, so yunk into our hand. Let's do another one. Oh wait. We have a librarian here. Let's keep our blessing in hand. Yoink. Oh, look. Blackfire Adept. Nice. Okay, this is good. Before you act at your location, summon and encounter the Servitor Demon. You blammo. Okay. So he's immune to electricity and poison. Before you act, succeed at a wisdom or perception check. Our wisdom is six. We need to get a seven to win, which means we can't win. So it automatically fails. That means we add three to this ability. So it's eight, nine, ten, eleven to destroy. Okay. Now well, for starters, we can reveal our sage's journal. Reveal this card to add one d4 to check to defeat a henchman of villain. So Yunk, let's get a d4. Display this card. Yunk, let's display this card. I'm going to just chuck it over here. Display this card. While displayed, when you attempt a strength check and do not play a weapon, you may put a card on top of your deck to add your arcane skill plus the scenario's adventure deck number to that check. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Basically, what that's saying is, is I just need to, let's put beast skin on our deck, and that allows us to use our arcane skill, which is charisma plus two. So it is a d10 plus two. And if you, when you, if you try and kill, do a combat check without a weapon or whatever, or out the spell, it uses strength. And his strength is a D6. So we're actually rolling 1D4, 1D6, and 1D10. Now, there's more we can do here. So it also says, you may banish any number of monsters. For each monster banished, add 1D4 to the check. Okay. So if we look at his ability here... You may discard a spell to draw a random monster from the box. So let's do that. Yoink. We'll just draw a monster. Where are the monsters? Here. I might put little buttons down the side here, down the side here that allow you to draw from those decks. So we get a uh, Campbellin. Oh, there's a 
I've got to get rid of that uh, snap point. It's not supposed to be there. Ooh. Okay, so we draw a monster. Yoink. And now we can actually discard that monster to add another D4. So let's discard it. We'll add another D4. This has Outsider. This has Outsider. And it says here, if you're encountering a monster, add another D6 for each monster banished that shares a trait other than basic or elite. So because that has Outsider and this has Outsider, we also get another D6. So we have two D4s, two D6, a D10 plus two to get 11. We should be able to do this. Come on. Boom, 27. So he is absolutely wasted. And now we have the actual Adept herself. So this shouldn't be too hard. We just need an Arcane 8. And our Arcane is D10 plus 2. So let's just go D10 plus 2. And we're going to spend the Blessing of Ascension to add another die. So that is 2d10s plus 2 to get 8. So let's do it. Oh, wait. And we we'll, we keep this revealed, so we get a plus d4 as well. Bam. Because that works on henchmen. Woo! Beautiful. So that's 17. We only need 8. So boom, that is completely done. Yablamo. Okay. So, now this doesn't actually go back into our hand. It stays revealed. I just lock that there. Beautiful. So we now need to close this location. And to close this location, we summon and acquire a random ally. So that is allies. Bam. Arcane, divine charisma and diplomacy. Our charisma is a D10 plus one. So that is our best. So we go D10 plus two, beg your pardon. Now we need an eight to get this. You know, I think, I think I'm going to have to discard a blessing here to add another D10. Just because we want to absolutely ensure that we win this. Because basically a D10 plus 2 means we need a 6 or better to beat it. And I just don't want to risk it. Because the thing is, if we don't close this location, we need to actually deplete the entire deck before we can close it. So really, it's really important that we win this roll. This is the biggest roll. Come on. Come on. We only need 6. Well, well, 15. Seems like overkill, but I think it was worth it. Bam! We get that into our hand. And we have actually closed this location. Let's have a quick look at what's in the cards. There was another temptation. Oh, frog. So there was actually some cool stuff in there. All right, so that is now closed. Beautiful. That was excellent. Our first closed. And now we draw to six. So it's four, three, four, five, six. Leaves us with seven cards. Okay. Yeah. Turn five. Uh, let's just get rid of that blessing we spent. Now, what's the ability here? When you would banish a card, bury it instead. So we want to send... We want to send Crow there. So... Oh, wait, you haven't drawn a card. Boom. Let's draw her card. Demon Hunter, melee or charisma. We actually have D8 for charisma. Do we have diplomacy? No. So that is a D8. We only need six. So come on. We haven't... Oh, you know what I forgot? We got the apprentice, which means that we can roll the intelligence knowledge. Uh, we 
which is a d8 plus 2. We need a 7 for this to work. It's a failure. And this is a failure too. She rolled a 1. Okay, let's put out a blessing. Okay, so... Intelligence, Arcane, Wisdom and Divine. We do have Arcane. That's a d12 plus 1. Okay, we get that in hand. And the Teamster, should have put him out first. It's a char Charisma 5, we have a Charisma of 8. Come on. Five, beautiful, we get that into our hand. And we are able to do the check which is an intelligence knowledge six now her knowledge is actually d12 plus three so come on we've got to we've got to get it this time your bamo oh oh my god we still fail unbelievably bad okay let's discard you to explore the location yet again Okay, Giant Fly. It's a Combat 9. If undefeated, bury a random card from your discard pile. After your act, shuffle this card into a random other open location. So we can't actually kill this annoying thing. All we can do is move it. Okay, so we're basically rolling to not take damage. So the way damage works in this game is that if you roll an 8 and this Combat's 9, you just get damage the difference so that would be one damage so we're, we're what we're rolling for here is uh to not receive damage we can't kill it it'll just automatically go to another thing so we need a nine to attack so i'll just do uh viper strike because that's poison and if you note that the demoling is immune to poison so that's probably the weak one one of the weaker ones in this set so that is Arcane plus 2d4s. It's 2d4 plus Arcane, which is a 12 1. Okay, that's well beaten. So there's eight locations, so we'll roll a d8. Four, okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, that's that. Oh, now we need to see if we can recharge this by doing a divine six. Uh, well, I mean, arcane six. So arcane again is D12 plus one. Come on, we need a six. Okay. So let's uh, discard that. Yoink. And then we draw one, two, three. Whoop. Finally. Leather armor, that's a constitution two. We should be able to get that. Oop. You blammo. Beautiful. Oh, what was the ability at this location? When, equipped, when attempting to acquire a boon, add one plus a scenario's adventure deck number to acquire it. So everything's plus one. So that was actually three to get. Doesn't matter, we still got it. Uh, let's put out, uh, I guess, yeah, let's put out this. Uh, 
Okay, that's 10 to acquire intelligence or knowledge. Our intelligence is D8 plus 2, so we need an 8 to win this. Come on. Oh, so close. Okay. And I guess I'll do Detect Demon now. Detect Demon means that we can examine the top card of our deck. Silver Raven Figurine. That's a really good, isn't it? It's a very good card. We want to get that. Uh, oh, this one here, big pardon. To recharge this, we need to do Survive a Divine Six. So that's a D12, uh, a D12 plus two. Seven. Okay, we just make it. Okay, and that's all we can do here. Now, what's burst bonds? Discard this card to allow any character to evade a barrier that is the obstacle or trap trait. Hmm. I might keep that in my hand. I'll get rid of this armor, though. I'll keep the sickle. And I'll draw back up to five. Okay, so that wasn't the best round. We only closed one gate. I was hoping to close two gates. The first round is usually pretty strong because you have you draw your entire hand, which means you've got a good chance of having lots of allies and blessings to explore deep. So I hope I usually like to close two two locations on turn one, round one. Now there's a lot of stuff going on in these games, lots of things to remember. Hopefully I didn't miss too much. Oop, that's my alarm clock. What timing? I have to go. Okay, I will see you guys next time.